welcome. I was going to do half of this from the roof, but I think I'm going to go downstairs where it's uh, a little bit warmer. And uh, I also know why I'm not getting my full solar output of my panels. It's snowed, well it's snowing now, this is fourth out of the last six days it snowed. I really should have got up here and cleaned these off, but I didn't. That's the Mississippi River right there. That's a long commute Nancy has to work. Even with the panels half covered in snow, now that the sun's peeking out a little bit, it's we get a couple hundred watts coming in. And I only have four, four. I only have eight of the panels hooked up. Four of them are not hooked up right now. The eight large panels are all hooked up in series of four. The combiner box has two series of four going into it, which puts me at like 120 volts, give or take, and uh, seems to work the best. The higher the voltage, the better it seemed to charge the batteries for me. The input for the grow watt is 150 watt max, so 120, I think it ends up being 122 or 23 when the sun is really shining. Seems to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good number to have it at. Like I said, we only have eight of the panels hooked up right now because we only have one grow watt. Uh, we do need a second grow watt to hook up the other four panels too. That's really soon in the future here, but let me just stick to the panels. I want you to grab that side, I'll grab this side. Let's keep the end in the gutter for now. Yeah, yeah I got, I got grow watt. Yep, see that sticker and the thing? Same yeah. end as this one. These four are going to be together. Oh, okay. So I wanted them both facing this way. And then these two little ones, along with the two little ones on the other side of the panel, is going to be together. That's going to be, I'm going to have to make some long jumpers for that. But I'll get the other eight up and running first. And then I'll worry about making jumpers for those four. Eight the eight up and running. That, 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 that is large ones, that a double R. Capacity or our capacity for power making. I kept calling these panels big panels and small panels. I don't know how exactly I've been saying it. I should really be specific. The panels are British Petroleum BP panels. I really like the panels. The eight large panels are 215 watt panels, and the four small panels are 195 watt panels. So it works best to have two charge controllers, being the panels coming at different voltages. All things I learned after getting them, but nonetheless. So just the eight 215 watt panels are hooked up right now. They're going to this one grow watt. We're really happy with the panels. I mean, up in the mountains, we were getting 16 to 1700 watts coming in off of them. Just a little bit more than they were uh, rated at. It's when it was cooler, 14 or 1500 watts was coming in on a hot summer day with the eight panels. Either way, I was really happy with those results. I'm really happy with the panels. It seemed to be really heavy duty panels. I used Z Z brackets, Z clips, whatever. They're designed for holding solar panels onto the roof of a RV. The way the roof curves, the way it goes up for the gutter along the edge, the panel's pretty flat. It's angled just a little bit, but enough to where the flex in those Z brackets seem to hold the panels really nice and square with each other. The rivets holding the panels to the roof of the bus are quarter inch closed end rivets. They're designed for a boat. When I put one on, uh, on a test, two pieces of steel, I could not pry it apart with a pair of pry bars. It was... Yeah, I just wasn't getting it apart. And if I couldn't get one rivet apart, eight rivets per panel really seemed pretty pretty secure. The rivets that go in the side, and I, I looked and found some made in the USA rivets. They seem like really strong rivets. There's eight of them per panel holding. They're as strong as a bolt. We go up on the roof. Obviously, I didn't shovel the snow off, but I should have. We'll keep an eye on it. I'll let you know if the rivets are something that don't work. Between the Z bracket and the roof, both down the center and along the edges, I've used uh, windshield urethane. I mean, windshields are held into cars where airbags can bounce off them. Windshield urethane is something that doesn't get super hard. It always keeps just a little bit of flexibility to it, which I kind of liked, and should, you know, seal the water out. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know. I was also going to take lap sealant and go around the ones down the center. Uh, cycle self-leveling. It's a RV type sealant. It's probably what it by itself is really all that's supposed to be used. I haven't done the lap sealant yet. Now it's way too cold to do it. I'll probably do that down the center. The ones on top of the uh, on top of the gutters, I'm not worried about them. There's really no way for water to pool or have an issue. And the windshield urethane, I'm sure, is all they're going to need. I'll let you know, though, if that isn't what they're going to need. I think that's everything on the installation of the panels and the panels themselves. Now I should bring you down to, uh, down to what we have inside the bus here. Do you want to talk? 
Okay, yeah, sorry. Explain what you're doing. Okay. Mr. Director, let's let the director <laughs> do a okay, talking Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Sure. I'll explain what this is. Oh, I gotta get there. I want to hear your explanation. So I. Yeah, I'll get out of the way. I'll do this. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you stay in shot. Why oh, stay in the shot? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the solar comes in here from these. Uh, I think... Uh, I'm not sure. I think it, that's like waterproof connections. This one, it's like a nut that um, closes, wraps like an O-ring around the wires to make it waterproof. And then you open up here, all the wires come through to here. Uh, these ones, you know, this is what the solar panels come through. This is the output. These go up into these areas. Can I... Which one can I open? Any other. That works. Open it up. That doesn't work. What are those fuses for? Uh, I think it's if it's the solar panels are putting out too much power. I don't know. I suppose, but that's probably not going to happen unless you get hit by lightning. Yeah. So there's a fuse in each one that you can replace. That is supposed to burn fast if you do get hit by lightning. Yeah, and then they go into here, and I think it's this wire then that goes yep. into this box, and then this is the little switch. You switch that and it turns on, oh. and then, oh, it's what? On. You just turned it off, now it's back on. But the light's red. I don't know, it means on. Okay, green means off, red means on yep. then. And then it goes to this box, which is a bunch of fuses, which is the opposite. Green means on in that case. And then, yeah, the positives go, are the red wires going into here, and then the negative wires go to here, because you only need like one fuse in each circuit. This, Maybe red means hot and green hot means needed. cold. I don't know if that goes to the fuse block of ours, or if that's just before it's grid tied. I still got to do a little bit more research on that one. Okay. And then the wires go out the bottom, and then you got like these two, which are the, uh, you know, positive and negative ends. And then that goes to our battery, or it goes to the grow watt, or like inverter and battery brain and then that charges the battery and then we can also power out of it. What did I miss? And why do we have four solar panels all jankily hooked up on the ground all temporary? Because why is this? It's a lot cheaper than paying five nineteen and nine tenths a ga or per gallon of gas. To do what? To power the generator to charge your batteries. Just a couple panels we can get like fifty to eighty percent depending on like the day, you know, at a, at a really sunny day, we get like 80. If it's kind of cloudy part of it, we might get like half a charge. But still, that means we only have to run our generator for like, like half an hour to an hour a day, instead of the hours that it would take if we didn't have so much up. So we just had this as a temporary solution before we got the panels up on the bus. That sounded good, but that's not why I have them out here. <laughs> why do you have them out here? Because I was playing around with different connections, whether they're in series or parallel. I found, because if they're in series, if one gets shaded, it's like shading all of them. But I found that the more in series you have, the higher the voltage you have, the quicker it will charge the battery, period. And shade is shade. Shade kills it no matter what. So I just found that having four in series and having 120 volts going in is better than having two in series, two in series, and then those parallel are putting 60 volts. And then I used three panels put in 90 volts. And that actually put in better, as good or better, as the four panels did when I had two and two. Yeah, I've been experimenting moving these wires around every couple days. So the reason that we have our solar actually set up like this, yes, Andy wanted to try stuff before he put it on the roof, but when we started out this season, we were based at a campground that had power. And once they opened, we didn't want to be there anymore and we needed to move farther west. So we ended up being based at a campground that does not have power. And if you're alive and you drive at all or see signs at gas stations, you know just how expensive gas has gotten. And to be able to um, put solar panels on the roof and now, you know, have a battery and actually power ourselves has finally kind of been forced into happening. <laughs> Very exciting though, very exciting. It's really, really cool to be able to power yourself. I have definitely sat and stood on the top of this. <laughs> I don't know if we could be doing this in a more beautiful place. 
although it is incredibly mosquito filled and I've never had so many mosquito bites in my life. No, 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 no. I need the long one that goes to here from this one. Yep. Oh, we can go. Yep. Yep, okay. Now let's go. And this panel is not hooked up right now, so the box can be on it. Do I have to turn anything on down here? What do we got? Nothing. Nothing? There's no solar panel showing up on here. Is it really nothing? Yeah, there's no solar panel showing up on the grow watt. You have to uh, hand me the, the multimeter. Now what you think? Hang on. Did you hear what that said? Yes, I heard it. It is still not showing up a solar panel. It's still not showing up. Now it is. Okay. Hang on. Give it a minute. I think we'll take a second. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Uh, 21 watts. 179. 379. 559. 628. 639. Yep, that 639 is as high as it got there. Okay, at least it's four more panels up and turned 639 into almost 1300. Yeah, four more panels would be nice. And our ooh, mosquitoes. Oh my god, the mosquitoes here are insane. How are you feeling about the, the solar on the bus? Good. No, I think they fit well. It's going to be nice. A little bit of room in the back for a rooftop deck. Okay. A little walkway in the middle for uh, cleaning. Batteries there. Yep. Here's the battery. Thank you. Oh, that sun is bright off of that white roof. Holy crap. Yeah. Whew. It's on my sunglasses. Sorry. I'll put them somewhere different. <laughs> no, one more panel after this. Two more. One oh. big Yeah, one this small. is the first oh, one. Oh, yeah, we do have two. I figured I'd get the, the last moments of construction. Final. Well, of the outer lip. That's yeah. Like the whole inner row to do. And that's done. Sweet.
The energy from the solar panels on the roof, we store in the world's most expensive end table. I built this end table using one inch steel. Uh, I built, just put a top on it from some wood I had, uh, put a side on it uh, from some wood I had to hold the grow out onto the side of it. But the end table itself is made up of three uh, 100 amp hour 48 volt trophy batteries. I chose the trophy batteries because they have internal heaters. Well, I chose them for a lot of reasons. These batteries have heaters built into them. Lithium batteries cannot be charged when they're below freezing. We live in Minnesota. It's uh, 17 degrees outside right now. These are up here now. They're not going to stay up here. They're up here now because I want to be able to monitor them and see everything that's going on. And they're going to get mounted in the third bay. I'm going to insulate the area that they're in and that bay will probably end up with a small heater in it, but I might not have to with these with the internal heater. We'll see what happens. Either way, they're going to be put into a bay uh, down below in the future, but for now they're just, they're my end table. We purchased one of these batteries around about the 4th of July. We didn't know exactly what we wanted to go with. Uh, a friend of ours was going with the, the 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries and I didn't think I wanted to put a bunch of those together. So I went with one of these and uh, at the time we were living in the mountains, we were about a 45 minute drive away from the nearest internet connection. So I went down, hooked up to the internet, ordered the battery. I thought I had it being shipped to the uh, UPS or what is it, FedEx place I guess in Mead, Colorado and I went home. And like two days later, I'd made the 45 minute each way trip to check the internet. Just wondering, hey, did the battery get shipped or what's going on? And holy cow, the thing's like three hours away from being delivered to our mailing address in Minnesota while we're in Colorado. I'm like, whoa, this can't happen. I called the company. I think I got the owner of the company on the phone. And um, he got the thing stopped and he got it shipped to Colorado. And like two days later, we had our battery. I know this cost him money. He didn't put any of that money on us, didn't try to charge us extra for shipping or anything. He just got it taken care of, got it sent to us, which was some of the best customer service I've had in a long time. Then we liked the battery, used the battery, so we bought two more. They were on sale on Labor Day, so uh, we bought two more of them Labor Day weekend. We're really happy with having the three batteries. I think we're going to need a fourth. I don't think three are quite enough. Three would be enough until you want to try to run like air conditioning overnight. And I think to run air conditioning overnight, you're really going to want four of them. It's really nice to be able to go 10, 12 hours with an appliance like that on and uh, not have to turn on the generator or rely on the sun. Because, I don't know, I just like to have that reserve capacity. But right now, three of them are doing everything we need them to do. We really enjoy them. Uh, the battery, trophy battery, the way their customer service, everything we've had from them has just been top notch. It's, uh, yeah. That was our choice on the batteries. Uh, we're happy with our choice. Between the batteries and the solar panels, we have a grow watt here. So that has a 3000 watt inverter built into it, which allows us to, the way it's set up right now, um, that has 3000 watts of output, which will run two appliances, but then you're running it at its max. We want two of these because we want to install a mini split that runs off 220. Two grow watts would allow you to run a 220 circuit. It would also give us 6,000 total watts of output, which that'd be pretty nice. Uh, right now it has 40 amps is what I can set the charging rate at running off of a generator. With two of them, I could up that to 80 amps so I could really, really throw some uh, amperage in and maximize my uh, generator time when the generator is on to recharge it when I'm not using the sun. Uh, the grow watts, the char solar charge controller, so they... It, it does everything, I guess. I don't know. I probably just screwed up how I said this. I should almost start over, but we wanted to go with Victron. I wanted to, I just, I think they still are the best company out there, but the price is by the time you add up all these boxes, the Grow Watt's one box. It's $800, $850, and it's our solar charge controller. It's our battery charger when we want to plug into shore power or run the generator. It's our inverter when we want to take the power from the batteries and use it so it has a 3000 watt inverter which would allow you to run two appliances at a time if you max it out but easily a heavy a heart a big appliance and then the fridge the freezer uh you're charging a phone all that other stuff along with the big appliance real easy uh we want two of these in the end and that's why only eight of the 12 panels up above are hooked up right now did i talk about that with the panels I don't know if I talked about that with the panels. If I did, I'll cut this out. If not, we'll talk about this now. Um, only eight of our 12 panels are hooked up. 
Uh, the eight that are hooked up are running to this. When we get a second grow watt, the other four will go to the second grow watt. And then both grow watts can charge the batteries either from solar, from shore power or generator, or yeah, really the only ways we can charge it is solar, shore power. But uh, yeah, we are uh, we're happy with the grow watt. Uh, it was a less expensive option. I hope it lasts. The all-in-one could be an issue, I guess, if your inverter fails or your charge controller fails or your battery charger fails. You, I don't know. I don't know how serviceable it is. I'll find out if it fails. It costs enough that it's worth taking apart and servicing. Um, if they fail, there's enough of them out there. But hopefully, by the time mine fails, that other people have them taken them apart and put them back together. That I can watch their videos. Uh, but. GrowWatt's been around for a couple years here and so far people have been happy with them. We've been running it now for about six months and we're really happy with it. We've only had the three batteries now for three months, but yeah, it's uh we're happy with the we're happy with the grow watt, we're happy with the batteries, we're extremely happy with the solar panels. Uh being able to be off grid is wonderful. We still run on the generator depending upon how much power we need to use. Uh if it's just running the dishwasher and you know using the microwave. We can easily run just off of solar. But as soon as we're running like a space heater right now when it's 17 degrees outside, so we have an extra space, well, we have a 350 watt going down in the water bay and we'll have a space heater going up here usually all the time too when it gets this cold. We'd, we'd need more roof space. I, I think you need more than 2,500 watts total of solar and right now we have like 1,800 watts or 1,700 watts hooked up. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm kind of rambling. Yeah, I don't know. Really happy for the panels. Thanks again, Pete and Heather. I never would have put that nice of panels on. And I love the fact they're from British Petroleum. That just seems, I don't know, just seems fun to have a panel from a petroleum company. Batteries, trophy battery. Can't say enough good stuff about trophy battery so far. We really like the batteries and uh, the customer service is top notch. Uh, if you need a battery, I like the 48 volt option. Like I said, a friend of ours went solar the same time we did. He tried going 12 volt. That didn't work very well for him. So then he went up to 48 volt by running the 12 volt. Uh, he bought some cheap Chinese batteries in series. He had one battery fail and then all of a sudden he has three batteries that he can't do anything with. I'm glad I went with the 48 volt batteries. These have a 10 year warranty. They'll pay for themselves before the warranty is out. I think it was the right choice for the batteries. I'll put a link in the description for the batteries. I'll put a link for the grow out. We bought this on Amazon. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll put a link to any cables or anything else we got. We have, uh, I think it's double aught cable between them. Double aught cable going to the grow watt. We have six gauge cable between the combiner box and the uh, panels. And the panels, I believe, are 10 gauge cable. Uh, most of the paneling cable is just what comes on the panels. You hook them together. I did have to make a couple of jumpers and I just matched what was up there, which was, I believe, 10 gauge. I did that six months ago. If it's not 10 gauge, I'll put something over the Reflectix here that lets you know what it is. Any other questions, please leave them in the comments. And I, I have more videos to show for some of this stuff and building this. I probably didn't take any footage of the bracket that's holding these batteries together is made out of one inch steel, just like all my walls welded some steel together. And then we use some pretty heavy duty brackets and along each corner we uh, attach it to uh, the frame of the bus or the frame I made for the flattening of the floor below it it's uh it's not going anywhere I guess is what you're gonna say but no I trusted in an accident and uh I'm sitting right there so yeah if I trust it then it's held down well hey look at that couch pretty beautiful huh we got video of me making that too a little bit of foreshadowing there but uh I'm off off track all the way off track here I don't I can't even see the track anymore I'm so off track